Tim Rowe here with Alex Reutman from Profound Logic here at the IBM I driveway to Watson event where we've been learning all the cool stuff that you can do with Watson. Well, one of the cool things that Alex did, he did some pre-conference homework and he started connecting RPG to things like image processing, facial recognition, amazing things that you can do. Yeah, image recognition is, is one, of the, one of Watson's capabilities and it's pretty amazing what you can do with it. So, let me demonstrate an example where we connect uh, facial recognition to an HR application where you clock employees in and out. Okay, let me show you how to create an application that uses Watson to clock your employees in and out. So, uh, I'm going to start out by calling the application that I've created. And you'll see that this message comes up to allow the integrated camera. And this message is going to come up over and over again when the screen redisplays. Now, if I had SSL enabled on my server, then I could actually remember this decision that I wouldn't have to curcle out every time. So here's the camera, and I'm going to go ahead and click Identify. And what's going to happen is my photo is going to get sent to Watson, and Watson will automatically recognize who I am, bring up my employee ID and my name. So at this point, it allows me to clock in, clock out, and, or clear this information. Now, I'm going to go ahead and clear... And I just want to show you that it's not just my face that it recognizes. So we're going to bring in another employee. And we're going to go ahead and click Identify again. And you'll see that Watson at this point recognizes that this is a different employee. We have got a different employee ID and a different employee name. Now, let's try this again. But this time, we'll have no one in front of the camera. And let's see what Watson says. So here it basically says that it was not able to identify you and you know, it's asking you to position your face closer to the camera or provide more training to the Watson API. So that's how the application functions. So next, let me show you how this application was built. First, let's look at how the user interface and the client side code was created. So here we have a rich display file that has basically two screens, the first screen uh, is the one that allows us to identify employees. The second screen is basically your failure message. Now on the first screens you see the main panel where all the information is but there's also a few hidden elements that are pretty important. There's a canvas element and there's an image data element that actually sends all the information back to the server. So let's look at some of the code that's running on the client side. So first there's an onload event and this onload event basically uses this get user media method. It's, a, it's an API that's available in HTML5 that allows you to start video recording using a video HTML tag. So this is pretty uh, straightforward. It basically refers to a video tag or actually by ID something that's, that has an ID of video. And that is basically this right here. So if we look at how this is coded, this is basically a video HTML5 tag with an ID of video. So that starts the video, but then the key piece here is this identify button. So the identify button, if we look at the on click event, is able to grab an image from a frame of that video. And this is done with this draw image API. And the draw image uh, API or method works on a canvas. In this particular case, the canvas that we have is this hidden element. It's a hidden canvas element. So the draw image API grabs the image, puts it onto the canvas. We can then use the canvas to data URL method to convert the image on the canvas to a base64 data URL. We set it to a hidden field and then this last line over here sends the information to the server side by sending the identify flag. So it basically sends the information over to here and this is where Watson comes in. So the first set of lines here basically bring in or require the Watson developer cloud. We then create the classify function as a function that can be called directly with no callbacks and this is done by uh, using pgs.fiber.wrap. And if we look at what happens when the identify button or the identify flag is sent, what happens on the server side is that we simply call this classify routine. We pass to it the classifier ID. So in, in this case, the, uh, the classifier ID is the employees. And this is something that we've trained Watson on. So I'll show you in a little bit how we trained Watson to recognize who the employees are. 
and then we're sending the image data. Now the image data comes in as a data URL in a uh, field called image data, but we have to parse that out into binary data, and there's a package called data URL that allows you to do that. So within this one line, we parse the base64 data and pass it over to Watson. Now Watson retru returns a set of results, and these results come in as as, an, as a JSON object. And within this JSON object, there's a few pieces of information that are available. But what these two lines of code do is they basically take out the information that we need, which is just the top result. And if the top result exists, and if the confidence score within this top result is at least 50%, then we proceed to uh, grab the employee ID that comes as a class property. And then we run an SQL statement to grab uh, the employee name in this case, and we make the clock in and clock out buttons visible. Now, if there is no top result, or if the score is not at least 50%, then what happens is that we come into this else clause and we display the failed screen, which is that window that pops up. So that's the basic logic here to um, execute Watson. Let's see what it took to train uh, Watson. So first of all, going back to our session, we've got here a little program that I've created called Watson 3T, T for training. And basically what this does is allows me to capture images. I use some of the same HTML5 client-side coding to capture these images. Each time I click this add photo, it saves an image. And basically you have to capture a number of images. So one image is not enough. And um, Watson requires a minimum of 10, but I found that even 10 images uh, is usually not enough. You need, a, you need a little more than that uh, to, to, to have Watson reliably recognize your face. So you capture a number of these images. The, these images are then zipped up and you can then go to the Watson uh, visual recognition training tool and you can create a classifier in here. So you can see you can, I created a classifier called employees. So the process for this is something like this. You create the classifier, you give the classifier a name, and within that classifier you have multiple classes that you create and you train them with that zip file of images. Now each class name in my case is a different employee. So that's the basic process of, of getting Watson trained and once Watson is trained you can run your application. So I hope you found this useful and I hope uh, this was an interesting example for you that you can follow and implement within your own company uh, when it comes to Watson visual recognition.